I'm going to demonstrate here uh, how to use image trace so that you can create your Warhol quad. So I'm going to click the open button. And on my desktop, I have two selfies. Here's one of them and here's another one. I'm going to image trace both of them so that you can see what makes a good selfie and what doesn't. So first I'll open this one. And <coughs> you can see here, uh, remember last week I talked to you about this black line. This is the artboard. So you can see that my image is much larger than my artboard. I'm going to type control negative or command negative if you're on a Mac. And now I can see in my whole window. And I'll click the artboard tool. And I will make the artboard the same size as the image. Yeah, that's much nicer. All right. So I asked you to get a selfie that is a head and shoulders shot and that has a solid background. And you can see I didn't follow my own instructions that good, right? There's some busyness over here. This is more than head and shoulders. It's also got arms and hands. So I'm going to show you what the image trace process looks like. If I get my selection tool and click on the image, my menu, my control panel up here has the image trace and the drop down menu options. If you don't see this panel here, just go to your window drop down menu. It's the control panel. Look, if I click here, it'll go away, but I want it to show. So I'm going to go back and click control. So I have my control panel. I have my image selected. You'll know when it's selected with the selection tool because you'll see these little handles here on all the sides. So it's selected. I'll click this drop down menu. Now the easiest way would be to choose three colors. I'll do that and show you what it looks like. It takes a minute to do it. it, takes more than a minute, but the fewer colors you're creating, the less time it takes. So there it is. Now you can see the problem with only three colors in this example, because there's a big piece of background here that is also a piece of my neck. And there are parts of my hair that are also parts of the background. There is a way to fix that, but it's pretty complex. So rather than fix it, I'm going to step back by choosing Control Z or Edit Undo. And now I'm going to show you what six colors would look like. What I can tell you about this is definitely do not choose more than six colors. The more colors you choose, the more work you're setting up for yourself. So let's, let's just not do that, right? I want this to be a fun assignment. So with six colors, it's a little better. At the very least, my hair is mostly separated from the background. It's still connected up here. But look how busy this is in the background. That can create a lot of work. And look at all these tiny little things I would have to select in my sweater. Oh my gosh, that is so much work. So instead of even working with this, I'm going to choose the other one to show you what it is like when you choose a better selfie. So here's another one. I recommend you actually take a selfie just for this purpose. So I'm going to zoom out, control negative, and then click my artboard tool and make it the right size. This is also not an ideal picture, but I'm working with what I have, right? And now I'll get my selection tool, select the image, and go to image trace. This time I'll choose three colors first. And after this, I'll choose six colors so that you can see. I think choosing this with six colors is probably going to be best. So everything here is separate. If I were to change each of these colors to a different color, it would be easy, not hard at all. So three colors works very well for this one. I will Control Z 
and do six colors just so that you can see what that would look like. You have to not worry about what these colors are actually because you're going to change them. We're going to use Adobe Illustrator's pop art colors to get some really bright colors in here like the Marilyn Monroe composition. There's six colors. You know, it just looks like a lot more work. Maybe I would do that and maybe I wouldn't. The step after this, after you do the image trace, is to click the expand button. And what that does, you can see, is it makes one small shape out of every single color. So now using my direct selection tool, let me deselect, I can click one color and using my, oh, I don't have any colors in here yet, so I'll just pick a color. So I could go through and change each of these to a color. I'm going to show you a better way to change the colors. And I'm also going to control Z and step back. Because if I were to do this, I would use the three color option. So I'm going to step back uh, to it untraced, and now I'll do the three color option. Much easier. There we go. And that'll be much easier to work with. So I'll click expand. Now I have individual shapes that I can put colors on.